So feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead, sitting bones down. So keep up kind of focus through that hip pelvis area today. Ribs in and up, getting the core active and supporting your spine, ground to the ceiling. Take a few moments just to center and focus inward. And remember, mindfulness, paying attention to what your body tells you. And then inhale and bring your arms out. Keep your shoulders down. Exhale, hands to your heart. Stretch the arms to the front, keeping your shoulders still down. And hands behind you clasped. Lift your heart, stretch your spine, and then pivot at the hips coming over. Hands come up, head down, and then just kind of relax. So let that lower back begin getting a stretch. Hands toward your head. Move your neck around and breathe. And then chin in and slowly work your way back up. Lift your heart, stretch your head back, shoulders down. Just open up through the upper body. And then inhale upright, release your arms. Take a moment feeling your spine, a little bit more energy going through. Keep spreading your toes, lengthening up through the bones and out through the arms. Exhale, hands to your heart, stretch to the front, shoulders down, and again, clasp the opposite way with your hands and lift your heart. Stretch your spine, breathe in, and another exhalation come over. So take a moment and breathe. Hands coming up, head coming down. And straighten your knees as much or as little as you need. And relax. And then again, chin in, sitting bones down. Lift those ribs as you wind your way back slowly up and into the upper body for the back bend. And stretch your spine even while it's back bend. Keep relaxing and breathing. And then inhale up. Release your arms and just take a moment feeling again along the spine through your body. And then one arm out, the other arm palm and palm up, arm over your shoulder. Stretch the hands away and lean to the side and then twisting on this one. So this hand slides down toward your leg, the hands reach away from each other and that side stretches open Put down so that you get those ribs stretching apart a little bit. And then inhale back up, exhale your arm down. Other arm out, palm toward the ceiling, over your shoulder. Stretch the hands away, lean to the side, no twisting, and push your foot down. Reach out through your head and your hands, down with that arm along your leg. And then inhale, sliding up. Exhale and release. Feel your sides a little bit more stretched and open. And for our twist, bring your arms out, palms toward the ceiling, over your shoulders. Clasp the hands on the elbows. Sitting bones down, head reaching out, and exhale either way to twist. Knees a little bent if you'd like, stretch it up, breathing in, hit it on the twist. Position forward, bend into that position. Head coming down towards your leg. Keep the legs weight evenly on both legs. And lift your sitting bones maybe a little bit more. Keep your arms by your ears. Stay in your twist. Slowly work your way back up. And lift your heart. Stretch your elbows back. Chest high. Shoulder blades toward your waist. And then inhale up, exhale to the center, switch your arms around, and again get ready for your twist, stretching the spine apart. Exhale and twist, whole body moving. Lengthen up on the breath in, pivot over as you exhale, and relax. Take a few breaths there, just releasing any tension. And then slowly work your way up. 
and chest high, elbows back. Remember, low back is very gentle while you're in your chest. Maximize through the heart, elbows back. And then inhale upright, exhale to the center. Stretch your arms up, let's swan dive. So arms at shoulder level, chest and chin lead, and then drop into ragdoll. Let's let everything hang, getting that lower back, getting a little more stretch. Straighten your knees as much as you want for your hamstrings to get a stretch. Slide your hands up onto your shins, straighten and flatten your back, tuck in your chin. So shoulder blades toward your waist, ribs up toward your spine and your heart. Everything nice and simple. Exhale and release back down. And then straighten your back, arms out at shoulder level. Pivot up, they still should stay shoulder level. And then reach to the ceiling and to your heart and into mountain pose. So we're going to start with a little hip work in our lunge position first. So come to the front of the mat. Stand in mountain pose. Bring your hands to your heart. Inhale, bring them toward the ceiling, looking at your thumbs. You do that upper body back bend if you love it. And then exhaling, come all the way into grab dog. Hands up on your shins, get that nice straight back. Bend your knees, bring your hands down under your shoulders. Remember, you can have blocks if you want to raise the floor a little bit. And then step your right foot way back into the lunge position. Get your hip coming down as much as you can. Front knee right above the ankle. So don't cave it in toward your arch or out toward your little toe or push it forward toward your toes at all. You want the ankle and the knee right along. And then drop the knee behind you to the mat and slide the toes back. So you want to kind of be above the knee or pad under the knee, either with a folded mat or a garden pad or something. And then relax down through this hip flexor. We're going to be using it quite a bit today. And then hands up onto your knee for a little extra stretch. And then just sink straight down through the hip. You want to really feel this front of your hip, hip flexor stretching. And then bring your hands back under your shoulders next to your foot. Tuck your toes under. Lift the knee, not your hip, and press back through the heel. And get your body nice and straight in your lunge position. And then push forward into ragdoll. And that releases that hip you were stretching. So just let it relax a moment. And then palms together, inhaling. Slowly work your way back up. And extend your hands toward the ceiling. Chest high, a little upper body back then. And of course, we're going to do the other side. So go ahead and exhale, pivoting over, coming into your forward bend, right dog. Hands onto your shins, get that halfway up stretch. And exhale, bending your knees, hands to the mat, and put that left foot this time into it. Check your front knee position. Don't push the knee forward. Don't push it out to either side, right above the ankle. Push back through the heel, keep the hip as low as you can as you start, getting that hip flexor relaxing. And then bring the knee behind you down, slide the toes back, and again, a little bit toward the upper part of that knee, not right on the kneecap, or give yourself some pain. And then if you want that extra stretch, come on with your hands onto the knee, sink through the hip, and again, feel that stretch along the front of your leg. Chest forward, crown toward the ceiling. Just sinking through the hip. Take a breath. Relax. And then again, hands down near your foot. And tuck your toes under. Keep your hands under your shoulders. Lift the knee, not the hip. Get that nice straight stretch through your lunge position. And push forward, bend your right down. Again, take a moment there, just relaxing, and then roll up to mountain pose. 
So we're going to do the same thing, lunge position again, only a little bit more emphatically in that hip flexor stretch on each side. So if you thought that that was plenty in the version that we already did, stick with that. Otherwise, we'll do it a little bit more stretchily. So again, at the front of your mat, hands together in prayer. Inhaling, looking towards your hands as you bring them up. Pull them back. Give yourself a nice back bend if you like. And notice that that too is stretching through that hip flexor. Exhaling, pivot it over. Come on down again, leg down. Slide up into that halfway up stretch. So your shoulders, shoulder blades go back towards your waist as you do that. You can keep the chin tucked a little. You don't want to crunch the back of your neck too much. Bend your knees, hands down right under your shoulders or on the blocks. And step a good step back with your right foot. Pull that hip down. Knee over your ankle. Make sure that positioning is good on that front leg. It's a nice, sturdy support. And then again, slide the foot back as you bring the knee down and sink into that hip. So once more, as you choose, you can stay here. You can bring your hands up to the front knee, or you can sweep the hands up and lift your heart, looking overhead with those arms overhead and sink through the hip. Or you can bring those hands together behind you and press your hands toward your leg. Again, emphasizing a little bit more so that hip flexor gets a little extra stretch. So the whole front of your body is in a huge back bend, emphasized right through that hip flexor, whichever position you're in. Just relax, especially through that front of the hip. And then releasing your hands from wherever they are, bring them back to the mat, right under your shoulders. Tuck your toes, lift the knee. That hip should be nice and low. Feel that stretch through the front of that leg. And then again, push forward, ragdoll. So the ragdoll is a forward bend. It's releasing what you just stretched. So go ahead and relax it, letting things release. And inhaling, go ahead and extend up into your extended leg. And looking overhead. Watch your hands, bring them into that back bend if you like it. Keep breathing, exhaling, give it on over. Hands to your heart, slowly working down into the forward bend. Hands up on your shins, under your knees, elbows and knees straight, back flat, stretch it out. So you're pivoted right at the hip joint. Again, bend your knees, hands to the mat, under your shoulders. Left foot into lunge. So again, just sink into that position as much as appropriate. Find your positioning for your knee over your ankle. Make sure that that whole bottom of your foot is supporting you so that arch isn't caving in, the outside of your foot isn't caving out, but your knee is right above your ankle. And then again, knee down, toes back, get your padding if you need it. Stay there or to the knee, or sweeping up into that arc, or bringing your hands into the opposite clasp behind you and pressing the hands toward the knee to enhance that back bend a little bit more, if that's where you want to be. So many choices, always deciding what's right for your body, personal practice. And then bringing your hands back down under your shoulders, Tuck your toes, lift your knee, press back through that heel. And again, push forward and relax and let go. And inhale into mountain pose. Again, just feeling how that hip's gotten a little bit more stretched. Just allow your body to return into your mountain position. Hands to your heart. Inhaling, follow them up. But swan dive this time coming forward, back flat, arms out at shoulder level, and then drop down into rag down. Slide up into that halfway stretch, bend your knees, exhale, and fall the way to the floor into child's pose. Hips back on your heels and forehead toward the mat. 
So again, allow your hips to release in this position. Notice that that's not stretching, but that's contracting through that hip flexor area. Take a breath. Just relax. And then inhale, and we're going to come up just into staff position for a little hip rotator work before we go further. So as you're in staff position, remember the bottoms of your feet press out evenly right in front of your hips, knees, ankles, toes, everything lined up. Knees and toes toward the ceiling. So that's a little roll in at the top of your thighs to make sure everything stays lined up effectively. And of course, sitting bones are connected. Get that pelvic tilt going a little bit so that those sitting bones maybe go a little bit behind you or you get a little padding behind you if you like. Shoulders above your hips, crown toward the ceiling. Keep that upper body supported with that core connection. And we're going to bring one foot up to the opposite thigh and let the knee come down toward the floor. Notice your hip rotating. Okay, this is going to work that outside of the hip more than the front of the hip as we do these stretches to release through that outside hip rotator. So just let the knee come down as much as it wants to. Remember, the more you're into the front of the hip sitting bones, the more effectively your pelvis opens through that hip joint and pelvic area. So just let that happen. You can put your hand on the knee and just add a little weight, but don't necessarily press it down. You don't want to overdo anything, especially if you've got hip issues of any sort. If this is a little strenuous, you can keep this knee up and toes up, but slide the leg over further to the side, which again is going to open up that pelvis and that little pelvic tilt a little bit more. And the knee will come further down if you want that to happen or not. It doesn't matter. It's your choice what you think your body needs to work that joint out this morning. So just breathe and relax. Exhaling tension. And then bring the foot up into your hands with your hand on your foot or knee, or wrap your arms all the way around and pull it in. The further you pull it in, the more intense it will be through that hip. So don't do it too much if you don't want to. And then as you move back and forth, kind of like a cradling that baby and moving it back and forth. Just let that rotator, hip, hip rotator joint fluid warm up. So it's no real fluid there. It needs to warm up so you're not crunching the bones together, but you're letting it get nicely lubricated. So as it feels a little bit easier, you can swing it as much as you want. Or you can lift your leg higher or pull it in closer, which is going to make it more intense if that's something your body wants to do. But remember, you never have to do that. And then release that leg back to the front and readjust to staff position. Feel that hip that you worked. So, of course, we need to do the other side. So again, make sure you're stacked with the knees and toes up, pressing out through the heels, and bring that other foot up. You may notice one side is easier than the other. That's not unusual. Remember, we're creatures of habit. We do the same thing all the time when we sit in cars, at our desks. So if you've got one side tighter, just notice it. You don't have to do anything special. So breathe again. Find your position. Again, a little weight on that, but not pressure. You don't want to overwork the hip rotator. Knee and toes up on your extended leg. And again, if you like that extra pelvic opening to help it open a little bit easier, you can move that leg out to the side. But again, the knee and toes stay up. So figure out where your body wants to be in this position this time. And then, Relax, because when you relax, the big muscles relax and they stretch a little bit more effective. So, do what's right for you. Breathe and just allow that knee to move as much or as little as it wants into that further toward the forward position. When I first injured this hip a few years ago, I couldn't get past here. 
So you need to know what your body is willing to do and honor it and just let it work out over time. So again, allow that to get to its maximum position only as much as you think is appropriate. And then again, we're going to move that rotator. So clasp around it or hold it and just move back and forth so that you have that side of your hip getting a little bit more lubricated, fluid, and warmed up. And again, after a few moments, if it feels like it's easy enough and you want a little bit more intensity, higher or closer. Remember, you want to still have your upper body in that upright position. So that core is supporting your lower back, the spine is nice and straight, your head is reaching toward the ceiling, whatever position you've got your leg position. And then release back into staff position. And again, just take a moment feeling those hips a little bit more energized and working through. So take a moment and breathe. We're going to go up into pins and knees table position to start in order to get into our pigeon. There's many, many different ways you can get into pigeon position, but I think this is the easiest way to do it effectively. So knees start under your hips, wrists, elbows, and shoulders lined up. Get that core supporting you, so this up toward the spine for that lower back support. Chest coming down a little bit so you don't punch up through the shoulder. Spread through your fingers. Now, you're gonna take your right knee between your hands and slide the left leg back. So you'll notice that left hip flexor is working. Well, you'll also notice that this bent knee right leg is a little bit working into that hip rotator. It's gonna get more intense. So what you want to do is move the right knee way to the right side of your mat, and then slide the heel up a little bit more. And if you're really flexible, you may get it perpendicular to your body. And then sink down so that the hip bones are evenly going down toward the floor, and your chest is evenly facing the front. So your hands are under your shoulders, and your Left leg is sliding as far back as it wants to go for that hip flexor, and this hip rotator is working as much as it wants to on the front. So this gets a little bit intense. So one way that you can release is to bring your forearms down to the floor, but not your whole body that overworks your knee. So you just want the hands in front of you on the floor, the forearms on the floor, but still you want the hip bones facing the floor, and the shoulders facing forward evenly. The chest forward and up, you can rotate looking forward with the face crowned toward the ceiling. So that again, you get a little bit more stretch through the whole front of your body, especially through the hip flexor. And then just breathe and relax. So as you relax, you may notice your hips kind of sink evenly toward the floor. Just let it happen, don't force anything. And of course, don't forget to breathe. And then slide your hands back under your shoulders. And then if you want to get a little bit more intense, chest forward and up, looking up. And if you want to, and I don't do this because it's not right for my body, you can reach your hands back for that foot behind you, bend the knee, and pull the top of your head and the bottom of your foot together. I've seen 19 year old gymnasts Gymnast cheerleaders do it, but nobody else. So if you're a little older than 19, you might not want to do it. It's your choice. But at any rate, chest forward enough, getting that whole body nice and open, hips sinking evenly toward the floor, chest evenly toward the front of your neck. And then press your hands into the floor, bring the front knee back and the back knee up and into table position, and then just sink back in the child's pose and relax a moment to give those hips a little bit of release. Take a breath, just relax. And then again, hands in front, and again, pivot up into your table position, getting everything positioned correctly. 
Support your low back, get that chest not hunching up, and lengthen sitting bones and crown away from each other. We're gonna focus on the left knee this time, so bring that left knee between your hands, slide the right leg back. And again, just feel this hip flexor relaxing open, and breathe. Again, we're gonna bring the left knee over toward the left side of the mat, toward outside your left hand, and slide that foot up only as much as your body wants it to go, as far as perpendicular to your body with your shin, but it doesn't have to get there if it's not ready to go. And then again, just focus on relaxing the hips, getting those hip bones even toward the floor, shoulders facing the front evenly. So chest a little forward, you can look up, get a little upper body back bend, working through that hip flexor, lengthening a little bit further, and breathe. And again, you can release that a little bit more with the forearms to the mat, allowing still your chest to be forward, crown up, and your hips evenly sinking toward the floor. So you'll probably notice as those forearms come down that the hips may sink a little bit further. That's fine. Just let them relax. You can keep adjusting, as always, into your position as effectively as it needs to go. Just breathe and relax. And then again, we're going to do the same thing we did before, if you want to. Coming back to your starting position, lifting your chest, looking up, and stretching a little bit further, or reaching back for that foot, bending the knee, and foot and head together. That is called King Pigeon. I don't do it. Now this time we're going to do something a little bit different to release the legs. So slide off and bring that leg all the way around to the front and stack the shins on top of each other, um, stacking the logs position. So when you're in stacking the logs position as much as you can, you want the feet and the knees next to each other. My body does not do that. Maybe yours does, but my thighs are much longer than my shins, and it just doesn't seem to position correctly for me. So see what you can do as much as you want. Get those shins as much one on top of the other as possible. And then we're just going to pivot forward from the hip joint and bring your chest and chin forward. You can actually drop your forehead toward your legs if you want, and that's going to release through that hip area a little bit more. So just breathe and relax as you're in that position. And inhaling, come back up, bring your legs out in front and back into staff position. So take a moment, getting everything aligned, sitting bones connected, stack your spine, ribs in and up or supported, press your feet out and do what's appropriate for you in that leg position with the knees and toes up. We're going to do a little twist in our seated position before our relaxation this morning. So go ahead and reach your crown to the ceiling. Everything's stretching apart. Remember, always have those bones as stretched apart through the spine as you can for our twists. And then bend your right knee or left knee, one knee, and pull the heel in near your body. Wrap your other arm around, hug it in. You can wrap both arms around to get a good connection. So that's going to release that hip that we've been working with. Bring that arm out of the bent knee. Stretch it up. Shoulders are down. Ribs are in. Stretch the spine apart. And then exhale and deepen into that twist. Bring the hand around behind you as far as it wants to go. And then put it on the floor close to your body. Stretch up from your sitting bones through the crown, and then moving from your hips, ribs, and shoulder, you can deepen into that twist while you pull your elbow into the knee and the knee into your heart. So just maximize that position as much as you want. And remember, the sitting bones aren't planted. That sitting bone on the side that you're twisting toward is moving along with your spine so that your whole body is moving into that twist. And then bring the hand up behind you, follow it back around to the center, release your hands and your legs. 
Feel your twist energy up through your spine, getting you ready for your relaxation. But first, we have to balance things out with the other twist. So, knee coming in on that opposite side, hug it in close, wrap your arms around, get a good connection, and bring the arm out. <laughs> so, keep the arm around and bring your body into the twist, pulling that knee in. Hand to the mat, close to your body, stretch up through your spine, keep pulling in with your elbow and arm, exhaling, deepen your twist. So, hips, ribs, and shoulder. Everything work into the twist. So keep breathing, keep lengthening through the spine so your head keeps reaching up, 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 opening the spine, exhaling, deepening, relaxing into your twist. And remember, personal practice, do what's right for you. And then bring the hand behind back up, follow it back around to the center, and release first to staff position. Feel your body, feel your breath, and roll onto your back for a relaxation. So just coming into corpse position, just let your whole body relax. So allow those thighs to roll toward each other, keeping the knees and toes up, and just let the legs open a little bit more. Hands, palms up, so those shoulders release and relax. And just soften your jaw, your face, your throat, your shoulders and chin. Exhale any tension in your torso, especially across the hips, through the tension, through the spine, through the whole torso. Just let it go, all that tension releasing as you exhale. And soften your lower body as well. Legs, especially through that thigh and hip area. And everything else, just let it go. As your body softens and relaxes, just let it grow heavy. Sink deeper into the earth embrace. Let Mother Earth support you, letting awareness of your body release from your mind. And as your body relaxes, just allow your mind to drift. Any thoughts coming in, just let them flow right back out. It's the job of your mind to keep producing thoughts. It's your choice whether you pay attention. At this moment, there's no need to remember the past, no need to anticipate the future. Just let the thoughts go, drifting away like a As the thoughts release, just allow your awareness to release your body and your mind. And just find the peace within. Fill your body with peace. Fill your mind with peace. And just be peace.
And if you'd like, just keep relaxing for a while longer. Or if you need to draw energy and awareness back to the moment to get ready for the rest of your day. Breathing more deeply, just begin moving your body gently whenever you become ready to do so. As you stretch more fully and breathe more deeply, you give yourself that final yoga hug of appreciation whenever you're ready. Press your back down, bend your knees, blood into your heart, and give yourself a good hug. Let your body know you appreciate its yoga work today and the work it does for you every day. And when you're ready to sit up, just roll to the side and prepare for the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me.